Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? I'm still here with the Mew Mew Force. They're still kicking it strong with me. Talking about professional emails. <laughs> I'm here with Jace. Hello. And I'm here with Captain. Ginyu. Of course. <laughs> Do you like that in all the times, like how I've said like, oh man, I finally started making some money off YouTube and I'm getting all the subscribers. Do you like that I still keep the same kind of monotone style intro for all my videos? <laughs> Yeah, it's very, it, it's very, well, I mean, like, you, you could totally be, uh, yeah, there's a lot, there's a couple people who do that. I mean, I suppose. I really do think that, um, the art of video intro is something that exists and I don't have it. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you could be playing the long con. Where, what, what do you mean the long con? I, I don't know, I feel like there's an intro that you did with us not too long ago where it was just so unexpected that like it worked really well or i i received it really well even though i was a part of it huh. i wish i remembered it so uh, have i ever told you why i say it's time it's time for an adventure every time i start a video by the way no you would know if you followed my videos because i've explained it but again as i've previously established <laughs> you guys don't have time to watch my videos no. i told you honestly no yeah <laughs> tell me um, I draw things for your videos. I still don't watch the videos I drew things for. <laughs> no, it's true. You do fantastic things for me, and uh, you're on videos with me on here. You have not seen many of them, though. Um, so, back when I was um, at the old house with my brother and sister, we were recording Hamtaro Ham Ham Heartbreak, which is a family favorite game, if you can believe that. Um, it's a Hamtaro adventure game that is the favorite of me, my brother, and my sister. We all play it. We all played it a whole bunch, beat it. Um, it's a game in which you have to save love from the devil as Hamtaro. Um, uh -huh. But on episode three of that one, because it was me and my siblings next to each other, we were goofing around a whole bunch. So I started the intro with saying, hey, everyone, and I was laughing super hard. So I was like in a very delirious state, but I said, hey, everyone, are you ready for another fucking adventure? I'm back with more Hamtaro. <laughs> and from that point on, uh, the inside the video joke, it became of like, wouldn't it be funny if I just started saying that for all my video intros? So for a, a deep amount of time, my intro was, are you ready for another fucking adventure? Uh, and then once I became monetized, I learned that you can't swear in the first, like, 10 seconds of the video or you get demonetized. Um, so I had to drop the fucking part. And ever since then, it's been, are you ready for an adventure? Because I can't say fucking anymore. And if I get too excited, then I want to say fucking. <laughs> and that's the origins. Mm. It's cr There's so many weird things that YouTube forces you to do. Of where it's like, recently I've had to go into videos and be like, um, YouTube used to self-check all the videos and being like, oh, is this, does this have extreme violence? Then let us mark it down. But it turns out their bo their bots were shit for it. So they've started asking content creators to mark it themselves. <laughs> and if, here's the fucked up thing is that it would be, it's one thing to be like, okay, mark it yourself. And then they added the, the stipulation of, by the way, if you don't mark this good, like if you lie or you don't know um, how something should be marked and you mark it wrong, you will be penalized and you'll lose money for it. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I have to not only do the work for you, if I do it wrong or not by your standards, I get hurt for it. Um, the interesting thing about that is like that... That's that kid, that's the, the younger viewership thing, right? Like, you had to mark if your video was for, like, young children or not. And I could see how, you know, making Pokemon playthroughs, they might confuse it that way. Yeah. Well, kind of. So, that was before. that. The rollout of that one was to mark whether or not you were for kids. And a lot of people were afraid um, if you... Um, said you were for you weren't for kids and kids watched you that you would get in a lot of trouble it turns out you know thankfully none of that stuff really happened uh, not to the extent that we know of at least um at least there hasn't been a legal case for it so that ended up being perfectly fine but in general they've been cracking down on a lot of things so um in general it's been a really weird just getting ready position for it i think 
Um, but but having to self moderate yourself and then also being told, by the way, if you don't do this right, then we're also gonna punish you for it. It's kind of fucked up. Um, but thankfully, all my videos are just I just part I just put down light profanity, and I just got the news from YouTube that I have a one hundred percent rating on based on being able to tell them what my video has. So I was like, okay, so that means I'm doing good. Sweet. You won't try and take my money from me, like Mr. Krabs would say. <laughs> I wonder what the uh, the amount of cussing is required to take you out of uh, light light profanity into deep profanity. Uh, if I had a guess, because uh, they have some, they they tell you kind of like this. I think heavy profanity. If I put fuck in the video title, heavy profanity. If fuck is in the thumbnail, heavy profanity. If I'm basically a rap video, heavy profanity. <laughs> um, so I'm also positive the hard big old N is not as a big old no show. If you just say it, you're in big trouble. Which is, yeah. I guess, unfortunate if I was like a, a content creator who was... Who could say the word, I suppose, but I'm not, so I I don't have to worry about it. I don't have heated gaming moments. When I do, I just <laughs> yell at Gobat, so it ends up being perfectly fine. I've always defaulted to the B word. Yeah, I, th I think we can say bitch. <laughs> I've said it before. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. No, just, just to be safe. Yeah. The hard C word, though. Don't say that. Pretty sure you can't say that. Wait, there's a hard C word? C. Yeah, uh, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, it rhymes with bunt. Oh, okay. See, I, I, I just don't see that as bad as some other people do. Apparently, because whenever someone says a c word, that's not the first word that comes to mind. Actually, no word comes to mind. Oh yeah, that one I guess would also be one. <laughs> Again, I don't think it's on the same level, but I think it's in the same level of just people. I'd, like, I'm not sure about that one. If I was English, maybe if it would be a bigger deal, but I'm not. Uh, so I just kind of let it roll. I think if you were English or Australian, it would be less of a deal. Oh, no, I have had a, an Australian friend before, and he just lets all that shit fly. And I was like, uh, which is funny, because back when I was doing uh, Modcast, which is something you guys have um, helped me with, I used to think, I used to have to censor out a lot of the things he said. Because I was like, oh, you didn't just fucking say that. <laughs> I have to put in the Spongebob beep. Dude, I love uh, listening to Australians. They're, they're fucking chaotic. They are. <laughs> And to be fair, they're doing perfectly fine. So it's not like me to be like... I, but then to be fair, once I told him, like, hey, this is for my own personal video thing, would you mind not saying it? He would go, oh, yeah, sure, no problem. But in his everyday day-to-day -day talk, he says it all the time because, you know, Australians are fucking built like sailors <laughs> in the way they talk. I just like their accents. Oh, yeah, the accents are great, too. Man. If you could have an accent from anywhere, what would it be? Like, it'd be acceptable. Like, even though you look the way you do now, <laughs> um, if you had the accent, no one could call you out on it. The Spanish one, I, I, maybe. I, I'd say a New Zealand accent would work pretty well for me. Hmm. I think it, you would be pretty good with a New Zealand accent, I think. Not that I could actually do it now, but I think... It would fit my character pretty well. Yeah. There's a part of me that wants the heavy Hispanic, like, uh, captain over there. But I, I feel want, like... I no, want... no, 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 not a Hispanic captain. A Spanish captain, like, from España. Oh, you mean some fucking Antonio Banderas shit? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. I thought you were thinking, like, some, like, East L.A. Chicano shit. <laughs> hey, <Like>, orale! <laughs> Let's <laughs> go! So like I Zarbon, can, like with totally the. Pull it off. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have an accent like that, but he acts like he has an accent like that. Uh, th disclaimer: We're allowed to do that. <laughs> oh yeah, we are. We're. I've said before that I'm Hispanic, so it's fine. So in here we have enough Hispanic in us <laughs> for us to let it fly. I've also talked about. Okay, now that you guys are here, I want to talk to you about my list of favorite. Um, non-hispanics that play hispanic roles <laughs> back in the day 
Oh my um, god. So number one is obviously Lou Diamond Phillips. He plays the Mexican kid in Stand and Deliver and uh, La Bamba, <laughs> Richie Valens. <laughs> Uh, followed up by all the uh, <laughs> the Greeks pretending to be Puerto Ricans in West Side Story. This <laughs> <laughs> is such a random list. <laughs> but but very good selection so far. Please continue. Yeah, and I think, oh man, I'm. Let me see if I can remember the exact wording of it because I was I remember I put it I made a list of it but I can't remember it right now. But those are the basic two right there. I think Lou Diamond Phillips was a very um, the first one that comes to my mind for it when I think the next one it played play, the guy who plays the ugly the Jewish man who plays the ugly and the good the bad and the ugly. Um, a Jewish man? Yeah, he's Jewish, right? I did I just I blow your mind? He's Jewish. Watch the good and the bad and the ugly, and you can hear parts of the more like Hispanic parts will sound more Jewish to you. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> I haven't watched that film since college. So, oh man! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not Hispanic, but you know what? I accept him and love him because he was fantastic in that movie. I thought he was Mexican for the longest time. <laughs> Uh, same thing goes for Lou Diamond Phillips. I think Lou Diamond Phillips is some poor uh, Native American. I can't remember 100% sure on that one. Uh, but he's not uh, Hispanic in any way, shape, or form. And as we said previously, the Puerto Rican people are Greeks. Uh, I would say number one spot goes to Ariana Grande, who is not Hispanic whatsoever. <laughs> oh yeah, she's white as hell, right? He's Italian. She's Italian. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> That's white as hell in my eyes. I swear you, like, her looks. Her looks are, like, real, like, suspicious sometimes. It's like, you do, you doing this on purpose? Yeah, she, <laughs> do, she does look like oh, an Hispanic girl that went to my high school. <laughs> That's the kind of look she's rocking. She yeah, she looks like really pale. Back yeah, when she was yeah. on uh, Nickelodeon. Yeah, she used to be super pale. That's why, like, when her non-Nickelodeon persona, or just herself as a a star, started getting popular, I would be like, who is that? And then they'd be like, that girl from Nickelodeon. I'd be like, the fuck? What? <laughs> Zoe 101? <laughs> it's her? <laughs> I thought she got pregnant. Damn, Miranda, Miranda Cosgrove looked way different. <laughs> her hair's not blonde anymore. Um, I forget which, you want to talk about the weirdest thing, the only thing I know about Ariana Grande, uh, is that sure. she used to be, she was a gotcha character in a Final Fantasy gotcha game. That's no so fucking. random. Yeah, she was. I think it was Exivus. Um, Ariana Grande was one of the characters you could get for the Final Fantasy, um, it was like a collab, but only with Ariana Grande. <laughs> she had to approve that, or somebody on yeah, the she did. Had to approve she that. approved it. Um, I want to say that she has, like, um, she did a song for it. I can't remember that part, though. But it was totally her likeness. She did an ad for it and everything. She was originally released in Japan, and then I think the global version eventually came over as well. Uh, but I remember people going, like, it was during the, the the heady days where you're like, I can't believe Ariana Grande is a gotcha character. And I think <laughs> there was, like, two versions, a free version and a pullable version. So you could have two Ariana Grandes. That's so strange. Like, what what do you think the crossover of like, you know, gotcha game lovers slash Final Fantasy enthusiast and Ariana Grande <laughs> is? I can tell you right now, based on the number of people who were pumped, more than I thought, because my number would be zero. That's so that's so fucking interesting. Yeah. Like, I love hearing about like these weird like, oh yeah, people who like this also really like this. Yeah. But there's no real like line through as to why. <laughs> Dude, you know, you oh. know what I discovered that that's very like that situation recently. Uh huh. And hmm. this is kind of relevant to today's news because it was just announced that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater is getting a remastered version. Yes. But fucking Bucky Lasik, like drives race cars. Like, uh, I forget what the the word is, but he he he's like into that and he drives. Huh. I would never guess Bucky Lasik would be into that. It's a weird right? crossover of stuff. Huh. 
Uh, is that similar to when you learned Frankie Muniz was a NASCAR driver until... No, he was a Formula One driver until he had to stop because he got a head concussion and that's why he is kind of fucked up nowadays? Yeah, that that's legitimately sad. It's like he doesn't remember his, his days on that cast. No, and that, that is very sad to hear because I would love... I'm sure he would have been able to tell a lot of good stories and now all of them are not available to him. Um, Malcolm still stands. Very good sitcom to like just rewatch if you, I, if you need something to watch. I've been wanting to rewatch it recently. Just because I remember telling a co-worker in the car when we were driving home after work of trying to explain to her what happens in Malcolm in the Middle... <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was explaining the the one about the like I love the continuity of um, Malcolm in the Middle, where even the most silliest things are eventually brought back up again. Do you remember when Hal and Lois were um, arguing, and she says, "And where did all this money go to tassels?" And then it cuts back to when he was doing the "We Are the Champions" bid. No, I don't fucking remember that. Yeah, it was when um, I want to say. Um, uh, Lois was pregnant and Hal was going through the, um, he was being uh, accused of being the top embezzler of his company that hated him. Um, uh, there was a part where she's like, they're in the rain and she says like, where, like all the money, we waste so much money. Where's all this money going into like tassels? And then it cuts to Hal and then it cuts to him like remembering him doing the We Are the Champions a bit from when he taught Malcolm how to rollerblade. And it does the entire thing and then it cuts and then it cuts back to him and he goes, I don't know where the money for the tassels went to. <laughs> That's right. I do remember that now. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a good bit. It's a very good bit. I also like, in general, the Malcolm in the Middle, th that specific like weird arc of trying to get um, Hal acquitted from a crime he did not commit. And how eventually oh. it, like, it broke Lois and she stopped talking. <laughs> When they found out that he hadn't been to work every Friday for two for, years, what, for two years, yeah, I think it was two years. And he had gone and done something for him. Uh oh, Friday. What? Oh no! Oh no! Oh fuck! Thank God, the graveler self-destructed. <laughs> but you oh. survived. Yeah, with 60 HP left, but I was like, oh my god. <laughs> For some reason, it got priority to attack first. It almost completely killed him. Uh, Alright, uh, let me end that episode on that, and then we'll continue in the next one, alright? Because that was enough to shake me to my core to go, oh my god. <laughs> See you in the next one, everyone.